Cool. Awesome. Cool. And we are live. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for another episode of Mission Briefing. I'm very excited uh, to have uh, uh, Stefan Judas here with us because we are going to be talking about uh, building apps with React, Contentful, and Apollo Client. So I will definitely let him do most of the explaining of what Contentful is, but I just will lead with it that it is a headless CMS platform that I have used in the past and use currently for projects and am a big fan of. So thank you so much for coming on the stream. Uh, so glad to have you and really looking forward to this. Uh, do you want to maybe go ahead and take that introduction a little bit further, let people know who you are and, and what you do at Contentful and, and about Contentful? Sure. Uh, I'm Stefan. Uh, I'm based in Berlin, Germany, and you pronounced my name properly, so thank <laughs> thanks a lot for that. Uh, I work in the... Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I work in the uh, Contentful Developer Relations team. So I'm a, I'm a JavaScript person. I... Um, Built for the build, I'm building for the web now for, for quite a little bit. Um, now doing all these Jamstack stuffy things. And yeah, uh, I'm, I'm excited to talk about, about GraphQL today because big announcement was a few weeks ago that the GraphQL API from Contentful is now included in the free plan, which means that yeah. everybody can start using GraphQL finally. And that's what yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. Stuff coming. Yeah, that is so amazing. Yeah. So community edition, if you missed it a couple weeks ago, yeah, now includes GraphQL API. So you get to go ahead and kind of test this out. And as your your data needs grow, your CMS needs grow, you can then move into the paid plan, but you get to go ahead, get everything set up, build the architecture as you would want, right? If you're wanting to use GraphQL without having to worry about um, paying anything up front. And I think that's absolutely beautiful. It opens up the door for a lot of people. We're seeing GraphQL slowly start to eat away at the, uh, um, you know, communication layer. Um, and uh, yeah, so awesome. Kudos to y'all at Contentful for opening that up. I think that's really awesome. Love to see that. And I am very excited uh, for today's stream because I am going to be using Contentful for a project myself and so i thought what better way yeah what better way to take advantage of the stream uh than to maybe go ahead and take a look at kind of like what that would look like setting that up so i'm very curious to to dive in and so what i'm gonna do here is let me transition over and uh so now we've got contentful here on the screen for those of y'all following along uh, and I'm just going to start, I'm just going to log in. So step one, right, is just either get started. You would create your account or log in and uh, we will take it from there. Yep. Cool. So I am logged in. I am on, I'm going to go to space home. So what I am at is at a default space that is just kind of created. This one is called blog. Um, I could create a new space, right? Could I create a new space for this? Would that work within the free plan? You have one space for free in the free plan. Okay, so, so let me rename it. Space. Yeah, I'm going to rename yeah, let's it. Rename. Yeah, so I'll go to general settings here. Easy enough. Yeah, and I'm going to change yeah. the name from blog too. So the I've been working on a project with uh, some of the coaches for my CrossFit gym. Uh, it's called um, Dad Bod Fitness uh, online, and they have uh, exercises for like parents. Um, they have uh, Mom Bod as well. And uh, yeah, so it's essentially shorter workouts that are done with minimal equipment for people who uh, need to get in a little bit of activity, but they need to be quick about it. So I'm just gonna change this to dad bod uh, fitness online. Yeah. And then I will go yeah, so ahead. Basic, yeah. Yeah, so space and contentful is basically per project. So the, the, the strength of using a headless CMS is that you have everything available in JSON. So usually in, in an old school world, you had to have, I don't know, different CMSs because they were shipping HTML or something. Right. So in then contentful one space is really this one bucket of data that you want to reuse wherever. And when we now want to yeah. build this side, this is a perfect use case for one space. Awesome, cool. And yeah, and that makes sense. Um, and it's like, just like a way of, I don't know, it almost sounds like, like a multi-tenancy, multi right? But like within your own needs for backends and like you can have multiple spaces to represent different projects or kind of however you right. want to do that. I love it, very yeah, cool. That's correct. So I'm just taking a look up here at the top bar. I'm noticing we have space home. We've got something called content model. We've got content media. Uh, this is neat. And we've got apps. It looks like you can add some uh, some apps. Uh, I imagine yeah, that's, that's uh, like fancy a, stuff. 
Yeah, I imagine that's like integration type stuff. So we'll hold off on that, but I just, curiosity, I got to press the button. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so here I am. I've got a new space. Kind of, I guess, walk me through a little bit of like what what is the usual kind of flow or setup to getting started with Contentful? So the first thing with Contentful or headless CMS is usually to, to take a step back and think of your data structures. Yeah, um, because okay. uh, in, in, a, in, a, in, in an older or in, in the past, what we usually did is that we had uh, CMS systems that were very page driven. And then you always had the problem that maybe you only want to reuse this tiny piece inside of this page. Yes. Uh, and usually you, could, you couldn't do that anymore because you, you were thinking in pages. Yeah. So the first thing with Contentful that you usually have to do is to just, okay, take a deep breath. Uh, take a step back and really think about like, okay, what data do we have here? And then you uh, define your content model, which is the second entry in the in the tabs there. Gotcha. So what right. you, you go in there and we, we call this a content type. And this is then really the a flexible way to define the data structures and content structures that you need. Okay. So you can create a new content type. And then you have several options there to um, define the fields that you want to get. And yeah. this is really one of the beauties of the system because when I start developing, um, I go in, I create the data structure. So let's uh, let's say a course, a book, a recipe, a whatever. Right. Uh, I define quickly the types and I can just query away and can start using this. Um, yeah. And in, 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 in parallel then, if, if you have maybe people that are actually dealing with the content, can then work in parallel, which is nice. Usually okay. you had to kind of, everything was t tied together and one person was waiting on Absolutely. the other to set up the technical stuff up. So in content, you can just set up the data structures and you can start um, building away from that, which is beautiful in my opinion. That's awesome. So I'm thinking like, I don't want to go too deep into the, the, the data modeling of this in theory. I do know one content type that I'm definitely going to need is going to be called a workout. So workout will be something Sounds that reasonable will absolutely be needed. So I'm just going to stick with that. So we'll call a workout and that sounds like a great API identifier as well. Um, in description, uh, this is where you can add a specific workout. Um, so I, and then I just go ahead and hit create, right? I think that's, oh. that's it. And now we can uh, fill it with, with the fields we need. I guess that, that, uh, workout also maybe has an image. So yeah. this is where the third tab uh, come, comes into place. So we, we ah. have image handling in there too. Okay. Um, so I you can go media. and add it. Yeah. And this yeah. is for media creation though. So, but um, in the content modeling, we would define that for our workout. Got it. And Got it. You know, something else that they'll have is there's actually YouTube videos that associate with like, like there's YouTube videos for each of the movements without in a workout. So a workout would have multiple YouTube videos attached to it as well. Is that something that we could do? You know what? Let's click add field and see what we got. Right. Let's click add field and list what we have. Yes. If, if you have a have a bunch of URLs, um, you can do short text. Okay. And then there is a little um, list tick box. Perfect. Which then allows you to define several entries of short okay. text. So so I click on text, I would imagine, and then that will get me to short text. Is this correct? Short text Boom. or there we go. short strings. Yep. Awesome. And all right. So name. They have you on the right side. Yeah. Okay. I see. I see. Yeah. Sorry. So for the name, I'll just call this, um, video links. Sounds good to me. Cool. And, oh, I see on the right side, I can check the box for a list. You have to take the list list and then this will become an array like uh, structure when we f fetch it later got it okay very cool i love it and then i'll just leave it as short text and then now do i want to create or create and configure i think for now we could just create create is fine create and configure is when you want to have custom uh, looks inside of the ui or you want to pass certain validations to the thing ah. this is where the apps come into place ah. so basically contentful is, is, is a big uh, single page app and if you have certain needs, because we cannot know what you're building, right? right. Um, and a lot of times people just want to mash together IDs or uh, URLs. And what you can do is you can um, upload or reference an app URL is what we call it. And then there will be an iframe running inside of the Contentful UI. And you can at the end decide how you want to render it. Got it's it. It's pretty, pretty nice stuff. Got it. That is very cool. That's awesome. I think so. I'm just going to hit create and configure just to take a look at that menu because we don't really have to go through yep. and set anything. Um, 
Cool. So, oh, cool. We could enable localization. That's really powerful. That is awesome. Um, and then we have some validation. You could set it to a required field. Oh, except only specific types like uh, uh, of characters to, to match. That's very cool. And then I see here what you're saying now with this um, uh, uh, choose how the field should be displayed. That's interesting. Yeah. In case we would have an, an, an app, there would be a fourth option which would be hey i want to have a, this app to display it and then got it's really it. just an iframe that, that gets some hooks and it's like okay here got you're, it. you're just running in this location what what shall we do that and is cool. we provide them a, a whole bunch of react uh, components and react ecosystem so you just you go in you render some react components and you can do whatever that's you want, awesome basically. uh stefan real quick we've got requests for you to also get some some lights some custom lights in your background oh. I have, wait, Hang on. should we freestyle that? I have Philip views, right? Oh, so let's, nice. let's see. So you, you can go on and I tweak my setting. I will need one minute. Awesome, very cool. All right, so I'm just gonna leave appearance and validation. I feel like, you know, we don't need to do that. So, ooh, I already see it getting brighter in there. I see the hue is now oh, on. See. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna save this because we will need the video links. That's cool, so that's already done. And I'm gonna click add field again, actually, because we're gonna need the actual workout. Oh, we're gonna need the actual workout itself. So uh, I would imagine, I, I don't know. I feel like a text field or a rich text field would probably be the right solution for the um, workout itself. What do you think? Yeah, so for that, you so for that you would have two options so uh, when contentful started we had also a uh, text field and what you have can do there is that you can choose the long text option okay and then you can render it as markdown over the time and when contentful evolved though we figured out that markdown has a few downsides when you yes. have big projects running and it really starts from from relatively simple tasks like linking an asset or an image to having links inside of the page because things change yeah. and markdown is at the end is just a big string block absolutely so if we if have your content a little bit more flexible and maintainable. We have this rich text content type, which looks and feels a little bit like a common what you see is what you get editor. Okay. But the, the underlying structure there is that it's just a big JSON tree, which means that you can render it and your data stays structured, no hard coded values and everything ties nicely together. Okay. I, I mean, it sounds kind of like rich text would be the best bet then, because also the people that will be adding the workouts, they probably just want like a streamlined editing experience that's easy for them. Uh, and I like the idea of, of what you're talking about, getting the results back as like a JSON kind of parsable tree of what the that that um, text is going to look like. That's going to make it easier to just kind of match that content type to a component on the front end. So that all sounds very, very pleasing. All right. So we'll call this, um, I guess we'll call this uh like workout is it weird to have a field workout called workout text. inside of workout i guess we could call this I, I... Uh, exercises workout and workout is a little bit weird when we it is because then it's going to be say. like workout workout <laughs> we'll call this workout, exercises yeah. because um that works for now i can always come back and 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 change these around as needed so uh naming things folks still hard <laughs> still difficult always always <laughs> will be <laughs> yeah it never changes all right cool so boom um all right so we've got that hang on real quick jumping in the chat for a second I want to see what this uptime command is uh, that Moody was requesting because it's something that I can add. So most of the layout that you're actually seeing, folks, is React and uh, GraphQL. So I'm curious to always see like when people use commands in Twitch chat because I am learning, still learning what are the normal ones that people expect to have. So I would love to know what uptime means. All right. So we've got our exercises. I'm going to drag that here above video links and boom. So now I've got exercises and video links. I think I like that. Ooh, I know what I can change this I to. I think you need a title still. I will need a I title. Use, uh, that's a good as call. As an identifier and probably as a headline. <laughs> okay, that is a good call. It means how long has a stream been streaming? Oh, cool. And, oh, interesting. I guess maybe it just showed up, the response showed up for uh, um, uh, Mounty, but not me. So I'm gonna try this uptime. It's something that Twitch did, but I'm not getting it. 
Hmm. I wonder why it doesn't show up. Okay. Uh, derailment. I'm actually going to change the name of exercises to description. That's actually a much better name. Real quick. That makes sense. So if I want to come in yeah. here, I can say um, description, and I'll change that to description. Uh, there we go. So I'll save that again. Okay. Yeah, you're right. So let's add a title. I need a Twitch yep. bot for chat for it. Yeah, I'm working on building my own custom bot. So that's interesting. Maybe I'll see if the, I'll use the Twitch bot. And for this, we'll probably just use a short text, right? That seems like the best field type for that. Totally. Cool. Title, uh, short text, exact search. Works good for me. Create. Yep. And we'll bring that up to the top. Now this is starting to look like something. We've got a title, we've got a description, and we've got video links. Um, and yep. that is basically it i feel like it's safe yeah okay We're it's safe. safe yeah awesome cool so i have saved it content type successfully safe now i'm going to take a wild guess here and say that now that we have a content type the next step would probably be to go to that content tab and add some content to the content type <laughs> hey, well, okay. hey. i don't know how you figured that one out so, i know you know what can i say <laughs> <laughs> Oh, cool. And so I've got one content type and it's literally telling me add workout. That's very cool. I love that. Awesome. Okay. So boom. So we've got this. I'm just going to call this like, uh, I'll call this just like day one or whatever for now. That should work. All right. So we've got that. Uh, let's see. I'm going to do a workout. Um, I really just need normal text. Like I think for right now, I'm not going to go too deep into formatting. Um, but I could say like 21, 15, 9, uh, and then what, what could we do? 21, 15, 9 of deadlifts and handstand pushups. That's a pretty, pretty common one. We do the workout off of the stream then. Right? Yeah, I should. I should, right? I've actually done <laughs> this one and it is terrible. <laughs> We make that on our fitness stream. That's yeah. what we do, people. You just have to jump over. That's it. Absolutely. Um, so funny thing, I did um, uh, GraphQL Summit was last two weeks, which also Contentful was a sponsor. Thank you again. It was amazing. We couldn't do it without you all, so it's much appreciated. Really much appreciated. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, I didn't really get to do much of active anything. I was just heads down from basically sun up to sundown, you know, working on, on GraphQL kill summit and i was like i'm gonna crowdsource my first workout so i let i just did a bunch of polls on on twitter and i was like you pick the rep scheme and the movements and then i went and did it and they tried to kill me it was like one of the hardest workouts i've ever done i did it on saturday and i haven't worked out since because i'm still so sore that like i could barely move my body like it was really terrible did you push through i did i pushed through <laughs> yeah, I did. But it was nice. really, really bad. Yeah, it was hilarious. I don't think I'll ever do that experiment again. It was fun, but I, I think that will be the only time. <laughs> All right, so we've got That's a good story. Yeah, it is. It was it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. So I've got this, but I am going to do one thing. I'm going to italicize this uh, and I'm going to add a note and I'm just going to say um, uh, pick a weight. You can try to go unbroken on the deadlifts that's something they would say <laughs> something similar cool so <laughs> all right so now i've got this right so i've got i've got the description we've got a title and now we would need like video links um i might as well as actually right. go get those i'm gonna go get those go for it uh dad bod fitness online Let's see if this is the one. Nope. Ah. Shh. All right. Dad bod fitness online. All one word. Hey, here we go. Uh, playlist movement library. Pause. Let's see if they have deadlift in here. I wish this was like searchable within the playlist. If you're if you're listening YouTube, that would be great. I'm just gonna <laughs> add, feature request. Seriously, I'm just gonna grab one if I can't find it like within a couple more scrolls because really this is just a for that deadlift movement demo. Hey, copy link address. 
All right, so we'll come back. Um, video link. So I can just drop this in here and hit enter. Yep. Oh my goodness, it's too easy. That's too easy. Do they have handstand push up? I don't see it. So the thing here is that um, depending on how far you, you build the site, right? You could also, um, we could, um, I don't know how you want to build it at the end, right? But a, a maintainable approach would probably be yes. to kind of a playlist per day or something. And then you only provide a playlist ID. Yeah. So that you don't duplicate the data. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, I think, yeah, this is just like to get the test out. But yeah, I think I would have like a movement content type and then like a playlist content type, right? Would that be the best? And then the playlist could be made up of movements. Would that be, cause like deadlift will come up a gazillion times. So do I want to always have to go fetch that URL? And it won't always be paired with handstand pushups. Like one of the things about CrossFit is constantly varied. So like the movements could get mixed in to a bunch of different workouts. Um, so I don't know. I, I again, I, that might be over content typing it. I'm not really sure what the, um, uh, uh, the the kind of normal thing is there. I don't see handstand push-up, so we'll do penguins movement demo. I don't know what it is, but it's got the Let, let's do penguin. It's got the word penguins, so I'm gonna just take it. I just wanted to have two since we have a list, you know. Um, cool. Okay, so we've got this. We've got our workout. We're basically done with that. Um, I think now I just publish. Is that that's it? got our, our thing we're good to go sounds good just publish it and then we can get the data in oh my gosh this is amazing okay day one published successfully so at this point i feel like we have two options one we could i guess look at this within graphical if we wanted to first and then we could go build the front end as opposed to or can we actually yeah let's do that what, what would be the best way yeah. to get graphical going here so so, so the best approach here is to just open a new tab and go to graphql.contentful.com, which leads you to the documentation of uh, our GraphQL endpoint. Okay. So, so when you go... What was that? GraphQL.contentful.com. Oh. And because I'm logged in, it's going to... Oh, I see. That's going to bring um, me the no, docs. No, no, no. Got that it, just got goes it, got to got the it. documentation. Perfect. Yeah. And now you go scroll very much to the bottom. And you will find then the um, documentation, um, the left sidebar to the bottom. Oh, oops. Um, you will find the documentation uh, of graphical. It's really the at the end Got of the it. page. <laughs> Got it. So you see they're exploring this schema with graphical. Ah. There you see the um, the URL that you have to use here. And yep. then we can already talk about authentication with content. So you can copy the URL. Uh, and open it in a new tab. And then this, of course, will not work. Right, right, right. Because <laughs> we didn't define what we want to query. Yeah, yeah. And and so, I have to fill in my space, which I believe would be my space ID. So should I get that first? Okay. Yeah, let's grab the space ID. Uh, I think which I... Which you see in the general settings or in the URL. Oh, um, it's right here. To... Yep, there we go. Yeah, okay. But also and I could have then... gone under settings. Got it. Correct. And then we go to settings API keys to get the um, key. Cool. And which we have to provide as a query parameter access token. Makes sense. And so then I can create these and delete these like as needed. So I would add an API key and I'll do it as an example. And then I'll just get rid of it after the stream so people don't come in and mess up my workouts. Yep. Okay, cool. So adding yep. an API key now. I'll call it, yeah, dad. dad Bod fitness online dash example. I don't really need a, a stream, but we've got the token. So I copy yeah. the access token delivery API. Yeah. So the important part here is that um, in Contentful GraphQL or in the RESTful APIs, we have two different uh, things that you can query in public. So both these tokens are, first of all, read only. Yeah. Uh, but also, um, they are different states. Remember that we did um, publish on the thing. Yes. So if you want to. You could, for example, build preview sites. For yeah. example, people or editors usually want to see something before they hit yeah, publish. For sure. Um, because they are not building HTML things. So this is where you could then use in GraphQL um, the preview part of the GraphQL API by just passing a preview flag. I don't think that we should do that today. But then with the content delivery API, you can access all that published content. Got it. So what you have to remember here is that both of these tokens are read-only. So um, for the delivery part, uh, usually these are 
when you have a um, React app or something, these are in the client, which is okay because it's read only. Yeah. With a preview API, you have to be a little bit careful, right? Let's assume that you're Apple and you have a preview site and someone sneaks and finds, and finds your preview token and finds the, the, the new product. So you have to be a little bit careful here. Yeah, for sure. Um, where you uh, place the tokens. Um, but that, that is the thing, really, yeah. that uh, these are read only and you can then use them. Got it. Got it. Okay. And I mean, you would have to do some serious sleuthing. Uh, new follow. Awesome. Thank you for the follow. Um, yeah. So, yeah, th I believe that um, uh, you would have to do some like hardcore sleuthing to figure out um, uh, as long as people are careful. Right. Like deploy previews are a thing, but normally those URLs are just random URLs that you would have to get. Right. Okay. Uh oh, it says upgrade plan required. What did I do? Whoa. Can you go to your organizational settings? Yes, um, I can. Maybe because, because I'm on a We order. changed the pricing plan. Yeah. And um, you have to go on the left hand. Um, you can open the sidebar, and there's organization somewhere. Ah. The, when you click the oh, yeah, settings. settings and subscriptions. There we go. There are unsaved. You should be. I'll save these changes first because that's my API key. I wanted to make sure. Okay. Go for it. All right. So now it's we... because I'm on developer plan, not community. Is that what it is? No. Yeah. The thing is that you're currently on a legacy pricing plan. Ah. Mm, so you sh you can upgrade that up great to a new community plan right um but we have to switch the pricing here um what did it say do, do we need someone from support here or do we let's uh, find out we uh, worst case i can just uh use like a new email and then let's see what happens uh i'll just use like a new email and we can create that content type and now that i know what i'm doing all of five seconds okay i mean it put me in so let's just try let's see what happens yeah. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Shaboop. I'm going to go. Actually, I might just remove my account because I don't have anything in here yet that I care about. So would that actually be the smarter move? Delete my account and create a new one? We could try that. I'm not really sure on uh, <laughs> what happens now with the accounts as you're on a legacy plan. Yeah. All right. So how about this? Log out. Shaboop. New plan with a new email address. Uh, get started. Or the Gmail Plus hack. Or exactly. Something. That's exactly what I was thinking. Um, so I believe I could just do try for free. Yep. Yep. The free community. Cool. So uh, let's see. I'm going to take this off screen real quick just in case there's anything super secretive. It doesn't look like it actually. Never mind. Uh huh. Uh, da -da -da. uh. Oh, I hit cap locks. Um, plus contentful. And my development platform, JavaScript. Although I do use a lot of other things. All the way down. Yeah, look, I'm going to do other because I'm a dev advocate. There's nothing here for that. Uh, Go director. Director, come on. Director? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, C level. <laughs> C level. <laughs> uh, what am I? C level of developer engineering and programming. I love it. So while I'm doing this, Law and Code just asked. They said this looks awesome, looks great, uh, but they're curious when it becomes necessary to upgrade to a paid account. So maybe you, you could just take a second to talk about like what um, sure. what's available on the free term while while I'm go ahead and recreate this uh, content type and stuff like that. Cool. So when you go to um, contentful.com slash pricing, um, and I'm, I'm just opening it right now, um, we offer uh, 48 content types in, in the free edition. So usually for, for small for projects, this is um, uh, more than enough. And then let's have a look. Let me just go through it. Yeah. So you can have for free 25K um, records, uh, wow. which count every entry or every asset is free, then diff uh, 48 different content types. When you now think of uh, of our work outside, how you want to structure it, uh, I honestly believe 48 is pretty pretty decent to to, to get a project running. Yeah, 48 um, content types. Two. That's huge. Like that's a lot yeah, of content you, types. Yeah. Yeah, you get uh, two locales. So if you want to go multi-language, so you could at least cover English and one other uh, one other 
uh, language if you want to. And yeah, so basically one space is, you get three environments. This is something that, that I'm very digging. So in Contentful, you can, um, it, it is a little bit like, so you have your master or your main environment, and then you can copy it in Contentful, and then you could do something like CI or CD flows. Or for example, when you have content model changes, you don't necessarily want to do that in your production environment, yeah. because then maybe all this stuff that is querying JSON um, it relies on a certain structure. So what you usually want to do is you want to try things first in development or something, and then you can go on and um, uh, use contentful environments for, for that. So for example, you get three for free, which is good enough for red green deployments and maybe yeah. a dev. Uh, so for serious stuff, uh, you can have five users for free. Yeah. So I would say for the for the free edition, there there is there's stuff there's. <laughs> There's space to grow, <laughs> or it's usually enough for, for, for the side project. Got it. Okay, so I think what happened here is it, it added some stuff. So I'm gonna de just delete the space that I that it created and recreate a new one um, because I, I, I think I picked like the example project and it gave me a bunch of different content models. Perfect, community, this is great. Space name, dad bod fitness oh, we get there oh well we're gonna get there there we go create that confirm and create cool now i've got an empty space we're basically back where we are let's add a content type let's see how fast i can get through this called workout uh i'll skip the description for now let's add some fields we've got a text field that we're is gonna make you a, power you a title yep so we'll create <laughs> the title we're gonna add a rich text field for description if I could just get my spelling down description, we'll create that. And then we'll add one more field. That's going to be a text list. And this is going to be, um, uh, demos. I'll just call it demos, demos, short text. We create boom. So we've got that save my content type, go to content. And now I'll create my first workout. And we said that was day one. <clears throat> that was 21159 uh, oops uh, deadlifts and hand stand push-ups cool um, and then I added a note that was italicized can I do command I for italicize I certainly can I, I bet you can I yeah. can yeah I'm always jealous on people that do handstand push-ups, man. They're really hard. <laughs> <laughs> you can go unbroken with. Yeah, um, yeah. There's like a lot of progressions to get there. Um, things like that you can do uh, to get like used to one being comfortable on your hands, and then you start with like um, uh, uh, where it's like not deficit, but like the opposite of that. So you'll have like um, pads or something under your head. So you're not going all the way down and then you increase the range of yeah. motion until you can get like head to the floor, matching your hands. You can also do like handstands against the wall and hold, hold handstands for 30 seconds to a minute to like build up that position. You can do a lot of fun stuff. I'm just going to grab two um, random demos because I really don't want to go through this whole list again. <laughs> So boom, <laughs> we got one, and then I'll bring back the penguins because I'm just, I have no idea what that is, but I like the word penguins. All right, so we've got that. I publish, we're good. Last step, I'm gonna create this API key. Look at me, I, I can't be stopped. One minute, Yeah. power user. All right, so I created my API key. I'll add the name dash example. I will copy it. We're gonna need the space ID too. So actually, why don't I do this? Let me go here and first I'll just drop this in and then I'll jump back here, grab the space ID, save this, come back here, drop this in here. Authentication failed, access tokens invalid. Maybe I had to save it. Let me see. Did I copy that wrong? Copy. So close, I feel like. Is the space ID wrong? You know what? Let me try this. There's already a token. Uh, maybe I can use the other one. 
This should work, right? Yeah, it looks. Let me try this one. To read the actual sentence. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's probably not. Let me blow this up, actually. Okay, so I'm gonna copy that, and then. Let's... Ixm. Yeah. So let me try this one. Hey, so maybe it just takes a minute for the API key, or maybe I did something incorrectly when I hit save. Regardless, we are here, and that is all that matters. If I go to ready for GraphQL, yes. If I go to docs and I click on this, we've got asset, asset collection, and look at this workout and workout collection. So, um, I don't have the ID, which might be the title. I don't, I think I missed that, but let's just do workout collection. Cool. Yeah, let's go for the whole collection. Yeah. So, and then let's drill in there. Yeah, absolutely. So we got workout collection. I don't. Th it looks like I can pass um, a whole bunch of stuff. Skip limit. I don't know if any of these are required. It doesn't look like it. So I could say, uh, let's just dig in and then see what we've got. So control space bar when you're inside of graphical will bring up what's available. I want to make this larger for everyone at home so you can see clearly what I'm working on. And look at this. So we've got total, we've got skip, we've got limit, and we've got the items. So, well, interestingly yep. enough, I'm going to grab total just because I know there's only one, but we're going to take it and we've got items and then we can expand this control space bar and look at this title description demos and oh description oh because it's a rich uh, text nah, field let's, yes let's get into it we can <laughs> dig in so what is here oh and we want the json interesting what is links if you don't mind me asking so um the J yeah let's just hit play and let's have a look okay yeah so the thing you is that when you do contentful uh, rich text, um, uh, maybe we just go JSON first because we're we're not covering a links. Oh yeah, um, good call. What you could, what you get, get go with a JSON, you get this document structure back, which then is a is a JSON tree that goes starts with a document on top, and then you have children of content, and you can iterate your way down. Yeah. If now there is the case, for example, that you let's say. Um, you have your workout description, which then has has a a link to another workout. Okay. What you could oh. then do, for example, is you could link this other content entry in line, and then you could, for example, I don't know if you uh, uh, you should put your tooltip or something that shows yeah. a preview, um, because you have this data available, and this will in the in the GraphQL uh, response, this will then be uh, uh, included in the links uh, Got field. It. God. so that you can resolve these kind of things and this so is... the way it works that inside yeah. inside of the json one you will have um the id to the links and then you can res resolve these kind of things automatically and this is where this beauty comes into place for example you can then easily do um, i don't know tool tips to certain things because you have the data available for things that are referenced yeah which is yeah that's a very powerful feature not to just mention like the bi-directional linking type stuff that you can do uh referencing different uh related content in line and stuff makes that very easy to pull that information in i'm just thinking of like building like a second brain type like knowledge base or something where a lot of stuff is interlinked or even your own blog like oftentimes i link to my own content on on uh, my website, right? And so this would make a yeah. lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. This is so cool. I oh. mean, a block is also a good one, right? Yeah. Usually you have a URL or something, and if you have a type in URL, you usually cannot change it because it's in Markdown. Oh. And then you have to find all the occurrences. Yeah. But if you link actually data pieces like a block article links to another yeah. one in rich text, this just works. Yeah. Because you're not hard any data absolutely and something else that i've seen too which is pretty interesting is like oftentimes people will link to external things which is fine but i've seen now where people are starting to like pull in data about these um sites like on the client and like tool tips and like when you hover over like it will give you information they'll have like an api set up to fetch data about like whatever link they're linking yeah. to so it just like opens up a lot of really interesting doors that's very cool awesome Okay, that's very cool. So now uh, we've got data. We have it available. I think we should. Data. I think we should put it into an application. I mean, that seems like the next logical step. Okay. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring up uh, VS Code. Um, actually, first I'll start from the terminal because I want to create a project and then 
uh, I want to open that project. So CD projects and then CD K Kemple. Um, and then, so this is something I have actually been talking about with folks. Uh, I saw someone do, which I thought was very cool. I just have all of my projects, like I, or I was for a while, just in my projects directory, just like a bunch of random repos and stuff like that. And really almost all my projects are tied to a GitHub repository. And, uh, so now what I've been starting to do is namespace them by the github org and then list the projects within that so like all the apollo projects are projects apollo and then within that and it's a representation of the like the structure of the github repo and i like uh i thought that was pretty neat so i've been trying to adopt that um so i'm just gonna do npx creates uh react app and i'm just gonna call this db uh fitness test for now um that should work and boom let's create this project yeah and once we do this we'll open it up in vs code i'll start a live share with you and then we'll be ready to rock and roll let's do it yeah i love it this is going so smoothly aside from me having a, a legacy contentful plan <laughs> sorry <laughs> long time contentful <laughs> yeah <laughs> user there you go I, I had a look at these folder structures too, but it was not really flying for me. What I now do for yeah, for yeah. a for a few weeks is that I have when I do npm init, I run a bash script that automatically creates a new repository on GitHub, oh, which is extremely handy. That's very cool. Yeah, because that's always like the the annoying part is like, oh, I gotta go. Yeah, going into Git and then oh, what was the origin again? And exactly. then Google the commands. How do I add an origin again? Yeah. It's always the same stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have that one down though. Jeez, I've run it so many times. That's like the one. <laughs> it's the one Git command I don't have to Google anymore. I flip it around. I always create it on GitHub first, and then I clone it. Yes. So that I don't have to do that. <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, I should actually just start doing that. Create it on GitHub first. Just be GitHub driven development, <laughs> right? All right. So CDDB fitness test clear. We'll run code to get this open inside of VS code. Boom. Okay. So now the first thing I'm going to do, uh, we have this open. Let me just open up like source app so that you'll be able to jump directly in. And now I'm gonna go to, oops, live share, start a collaboration session. Okay, cool, so that's copied. I'm gonna uh, bring up Skype and drop this to you in chat. I know, I know folks, we are, we're using Skype. It sounds weird, but it works well for streaming. So we do. Yeah, we do what we have to. We use the tools that we must. All right, so you've got that link. Let me know if that works for you. Hopefully you don't have any issues. Hey, you joined. So I was, uh, I had Shruti Kapoor on. Uh, hello, awesome, perfect. So I had Shruti Kapoor on. She's um, uh, a developer at PayPal. And we had, we had, for whatever reason, a live share just was not working for us. It just, uh, we we spent a lot of time trying to do it. So eventually what we did was I just screen shared, but then me and you tried that today and that wasn't working. It's just like hit or miss with everything. Um, but cool. So computers. you're, yeah, computers really technology. They say it makes <laughs> life better, but I've yet to see it. <laughs> he says as he picks up his phone and does like a million <laughs> things from this tiny handheld yeah. computer. Except taking phone calls. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're in. The next step is it's GraphQL. We're using a GraphQL API, so we want a GraphQL client. Hey, what do you know? I happen to have just the one. And uh, for that, we're going to use Apollo client. Yes, you do. I bet. <laughs> I bet I do. Yeah. So we're going to use Urkel, <laughs> which also is actually <laughs> a very good Apollo cl um, uh, GraphQL client. So don't don't knock it. I've used it a lot of times. I actually really enjoy Urkel. Um, I've actually been wanting to try out. There's another one. I think it's called um, people are using React Query and GraphQL request together, I believe is a new combination for like a very lightweight. There's no caching type of anything. It's just, you can run your queries. It's almost like the fetch equivalent. Um, but anyway, I'm digressing. 
So let me go ahead and bring maybe, maybe you want to maybe you want to give a little bit of intro for the people that are new to the whole topic on, on why you want to use a client instead of old school fetch. That's a really good question. So why aren't we just going to use uh, fetch to run our queries? So uh, when it comes to really any type of of network uh, uh, situation when you're fetching data, Oftentimes, yes, if it's just the very beginning or maybe you're just calling out to one simple endpoint and you don't really have requirements where you might want to cache the data that's returned, um, have more um, uh, error handling built in or deal with the authentication for all of your requests in one way um, or uh, just like the, the list kind of goes on. And so, yeah, so at that point, that's when you want to kind of pick up a client instead of having to build out your own, although that is an option. I've seen lots of people do that, um, you know, using things like Redux or in the new hooks world, use Reducer and all this in React context. Those are all viable. Uh, but in this case, when it comes to GraphQL, I prefer to use Apollo client because the uh, caching mechanisms, new features like reactive variables and some other stuff that we won't dive into here. Um, they, it makes it a very powerful tool to make it easy to work with your GraphQL data uh, and not have to spend time. What I like to say is I don't want to write like pipeline code or infrastructure code. I want to write product code. And so I'm always looking for tools that allow me to focus my time maximizing writing product or business logic, because that is really what is your app, how the data is cached how uh, you're fetching it and all that stuff is abstracted from the user. What your app really is are the things that your user can do. So I am uh, what I like to call a lazy programmer and I just wanna focus, I wanna write the minimal amount of code I have to to achieve the goal that I'm trying to achieve. Um, and yeah, and, and so that's why also something like Contentful is so appealing. You get a GraphQL API. I don't have to create a GraphQL API. I don't have to maintain a GraphQL API. I just get one that I can now attach to and on the client, I'm going to use a client so that I don't have to do any work and I just run a couple lines of code and I can now interact with a, a remote data source. So for me, it's yeah. all about ease of use and productivity, the developer experience, you know? I mean, there, there's also a lot of things in the details very often, right? Especially you already said caching. Yeah. Caching is not a trivial thing to do. It is. It sounds like, yeah, I, I spin up an object and I put some things in there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're good. We're done and, here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just call the key from the object. No problem. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a fantastic point. And, you know, it's, it's very difficult. Um, you don't oftentimes don't realize, you know, you'll hit edge cases with your cache and like all these things. And when you use a client, especially an open source one, you now get to rely on all of the hard work and all of the problems that the community has hit that have been fixed and solved for you. Um, yeah. And it's just not reinventing the wheel because if you're doing it on your own, eventually you'll have reinvented the wheel. You start off with a spoke. But before you know it, you had more spokes and more spokes, more spokes. And then you want to pull something around the outside and boom, we've got a wheel. So, you know, it's just a matter of making um, life a bit easier. So I just installed Apollo client. The Apollo client three is the newest version. And you do that with at Apollo client. But I did make one mistake, which is I forgot to install GraphQL itself. So I'm going to add that as well. So we can add uh uh, GraphQL and that just Apollo clients going to rely on that GraphQL package under the hood to do some things. But those are the only two dependencies you need to get started with Apollo client. So now that we have that here, the way that it works, because we're in a react app, we're going to create an Apollo provider and then we'll instantiate an Apollo client. We will pass that to our provider and at that point anywhere down the tree um, and you could add this at different layers of your app if you don't need everything to be able to have graphql but in our case we're going to keep it simple so i'm actually going to open back up index.js and we're going to work from within here so i'm going to import now as mentioned um, let's see we need apollo provider oh and the new thing is single point of entry so an apollo client now it used to be you had to bring in like the react hooks from a different library um in memory cache came from a different package some of the basic links like http link came from a different package it's all included uh within the one so now we have apollo client and i think in memory cache 
um, will be uh, the last thing that we'll actually need to uh, add here. So a couple things. Let's do, that's from Apollo client. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and just do right now, we'll wrap Apollo provider around and uh, we're going to say client. There we go. And we'll close that off. All right. So we've got our client. We're ready to go there, but we are our provider, but we don't have a client yet. And so we get that by doing cons client. It's going to be equal to a new Apollo client. Why is that not showing up? There you are. Uh, and then we're going to pass it some configuration options here. So the first one is the cache and we're going to use a new in memory cache. So what this means before when we were like talking about caching and this is why it gets so important. We're just going to use a cache that is in memory. So it's just going to create object, basically like a giant object. Uh, it's going to have a bunch of keys that it knows how to set up and, and work with, and, but it will live in memory. So what that means is if we refresh the page or we navigate away, uh, we would lose our, our cache, right? It would wipe that cache out. There are other cache packages that you could do things like persist your cache offline uh, and do a lot of other stuff. But for now, this like is service worker stuff. Yeah. Well, how does it... uh, well, there's a couple different options. So the one that's like persisting um, uh, your cache will do periodic updates into either. I don't, I think it either uses uh, index DB, um, the most popular one. So it's just going to use like what the browser has as a database. And then the, uh, there's a couple other versions, but if you just Google around for Apollo client cache implementations or something, you'll see that, that there's, there's quite a few different ones. Yeah. But, um, um, the, the name of the most popular one is escaping me. It's like something like, a, not Achilles, but it's some like name of some, uh, either Greek or like Roman God or something. But anyway, it's pretty fancy good. Fancy name. It's a fancy name. And then the other thing here that we need is where are we going to actually connect to? And so this will be the, the same URL that we used within graphical, but I can't remember. I want to say maybe it's URI. There we go. Thank goodness for IntelliSense. All right. So we have a URI. So we're going to go grab that from the browser. And that yep. is going to be, well, we don't want the explorer part. That's going to get us graphical. Yeah. We just want. You can just, yep. Yep. Drop right. the explorer. And then we can decide if we want to go with a query parameter or if we want to pass a header. That, that's up to you. I, I think I'm going to show the header route um, here because you could just add headers. Cleaner. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Right yeah, in the cleaner. client. I think it's cleaner. Exactly. And, and normally you would want to put this in an environment variable. You would not just want to include your, your API token directly within your app but I don't feel like installing .env and all that fun jazz. So we will uh, just add it here, but know that this is not gonna go anywhere. So there's this headers property, so we can just do headers. And I imagine this is gonna be access control. Um, what is the normal? Authorization. Yeah, something like, oh, it's just authorization you use? Perfect. Yeah, and then uh, uh, bearer and then the token. Yes, perfect. So in that case, we'll do, uh, uh, a string template bearer and then here is where we're going to drop in our token and so we'll go fetch that cool so we've got our token and this is it so this is all that it takes to get started with apollo client so now we can pass our client in here and we are good to go. So in order to test this out, right, we want to run this. We want to be able to test this. We're going to go into app.js and I'm going to import uh, two things. I'm going to import use query uh, in GQL from Apollo client. And we'll say uh, const query, uh, let's do like this is equal to uh, GQL I always adds that extra one. Okay. So in here now we can actually fall back on graphical, right? So we already know we already have a query right here. So I'm actually just going to grab this and use this because why not? Normally also That's I, always the best part. Always the best part. Normally I do recommend naming queries. So let's actually just go ahead and do that. 
and we'll say uh, query uh, workouts. It's just a good habit to get into. It gives you more information about your uh, query. And then especially if you tie into some sort of like logging or or system where, uh, you know, your back end relies on query names for caching, blah, 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 blah. Long story short, it's a good practice to get into. Um, OK, so we have a query and we have use query. So now what we can do is we can Let's come in. Do here. it. Oh, I know. We are cooking, right? So we say const data errors and loading uh, equals use query. Uh, and that's going to be our query. So we've already got this set up. So now what we're going to do, we're going to say, uh, let's come down here. We'll get rid of this. Uh, oops. Let's just do this. Boop. Um, actually, I imagine we can get rid of all of this. So we'll say loading. And if that's true, we'll just return like an H2. Uh, and then we'll say loading your data, loading workouts. Ta -da. And then otherwise, we're not loading. And in this case, we'll open this up. And for right now, um, we'll just dump the, the JSON out of, we know we're only going to have one of these results. Um, but we can say, uh, this is going to be, and we'll deal with errors in a second too. Like if there was an error, we would probably want to handle that return early or, you know, have like some sort of um, error boundary around this part of the app that knew how to handle our errors. But for now, we, we won't worry about that. And we will say, um, we'll say data dot, it's going to be workout collection. I believe, right? Workout collection. Yep, workout collection. Yeah. Uh, and then dot items here, and we can map and the first over one. Those. Uh, yep, yeah, that's good. Yeah, why not? We might as well. Because uh, it is a collection, so just show kind of how you would deal with that. Um, actually, yep. so for each workout. And then I'm just going to do a like pre and code. Um, and we're going to drop in workout dot, um, dot description. Uh, dot json so we could just see that it's in fact working um, code and pre yeah and, and this this is explicitly logging out or showing them the which text field of the whole thing right so yeah exactly so i think i've broken something so let me figure out what's going on here <laughs> i think this needs to be wrapped yeah so it's saying that data it expected a comma That's blowing. My, yeah, that's blowing my mind. Maybe it's just like broken. Let's see. Let's run it. Pre-code. Yeah. I mean, it looks like it would be right. I think this might just be VS code. We'll find out in about two seconds. And let's blow this up. And blow this up. Okay, so that really is. Oh, it's not defined. I need to make that a string. Oh, right. I don't have to make that an actual. Well, that's just silly. I can't believe I did that. Like, we don't need this because it is just a string. Because <laughs> I, I, I was talking about environment variables. I did spot it. Yeah, I did spot it. I was talking about environment variables, and I'm like, you would want to put it in there. And then I dropped the string in like it was an environment variable. Okay, so we are getting this. Unexpected token, comma, expected comma. Do I not know how to? do this let's go back to app.js what am i missing here loading let's take out this is this is before we make the request right so we have something general yeah going on here because the build process is complaining about it yeah no this is an actual syntax error i did actually something wrong so if i let's remove let's remove this part oh i think it's not closed properly first of all Yes, I did it a double. I did a double um, curly brackets. Yeah. I had two of them. So now this though goes away, and that here we go. It. There we go. Now it's vomiting. Yeah. I, I promise I can code sometimes. Although sometimes. I, they do call <laughs> me the worst dev, and I think maybe you're starting 
<laughs> to understand why. All right, so we've got this. We've got code. So let's go back and look and see what we've got here. So it seems that I might still be hitting a console error. Objects are not valid as a React child. Found object with keys. Data, content, no type. Use an array instead. Encode in pre. The, at, at the request that is flying, there's, there should yeah. be a request now in the next panel, right? Yep, just see absolutely. if we... Yeah. Well, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go take a look at, um, that's gonna be this. And uh, let's see, let's make this a lot like bigger move it over well, so it's here looks good it's here yeah. it's just me not doing this correctly workout data dot workout collection dot items should be an array data workout collection items dot map oh um do, i think because this is wrong because it's not it's trying to execute that so oh no it's adding those <sighs> code much apparently not all right how about this what was the error again it says that it uh it received an object oh it said it received an object i know what's happening because i'm dropping a json in but really I need to call like to string on it. Like uh, uh, JSON dot stringify. Mm, yeah, yeah, good call. Now so that's the big JSON tree that we, that we inspected earlier. Today. Yeah, exactly. So now, boom, okay. Doesn't look very pretty, but it's dumping it. So we've already got our data. So let's take this a step further. So it's already working. But I want to actually just see the workout. I want to get um, this to actually be something that is uh, uh, more useful. So here's what we're going to do. We'll return first. Well, first we'll just make a fragment so that we have something to work within. Uh, thank you, IntelliSense. That is not helpful. We'll say H3 um, because for a workout, we're going to have a workout.title. Right, and yep. we know that, so we'll do H3 there. Uh, and then we also know, I'm gonna come down a couple lines and we'll do a UL, an unordered list, because we're gonna have links. For the YouTube videos. For the YouTube videos, exactly. Uh, and so actually, let's go right before this and put in a div and we'll give an H4. There we go. So now we've got this. And then in here, we're going to map over workout dot. Um, what did we call that? Demos. I think it's demos. Let's go. Let's go to graphical. When, when in doubt, go to graphical. Demos. Perfect. Oh, even better. It's just an array. So then we could say yeah. demos dot map demo. And, then and here we see that we maybe already have had made a mistake um, because right now we really just have URLs, yep. right? And what you want to now do is want you want to make a list of links, exactly. but we don't know what to put into the links. Exactly. I, yeah, I like, think we can fly with this right now. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it is something, that was not a good choice in the beginning. Yeah, it's something that I wanted to fix because honestly, I would want to put like what the name of the movement is probably and then have the link be like the, uh, you know, just the link to it. So then it could just be like deadlift and handstand push up. And yeah. So again, this is like talking about evolving your content types. And, um, you know, that's why, as you mentioned in the beginning, of course, things will change over time, which is fine, but you want to kind of map it out. You want to think about your data structures up front, spend that effort. Um, I forget who it was. Uh, I think Jason Langstorff, who uh, has a great blog, blog post about how chefs use like that uh, process something. Oh, I'm going to have to dig this up. Um, basically, the whole gist is prepare up front, kind of like having all of your ingredients ready so that when it's time to actually do the cooking, you're not caught by surprise by anything. You have everything you need directly in front of you. 
Um, and yeah, it's just a really great uh, Jay Langsdorf blog. A really great article. Highly recommend reading it. Where's your blog, Jason? Here we go. Uh, blog. Do you have a search? No. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Oh my goodness. Older posts. Oh. Someone is busy, huh? Yeah, but also this URL is broken. Uh -huh. Yak shaving. Oh my goodness. How much do you write? I don't know if this is to the very end or if, yeah, it is. It's page 10. I need to tell him this is busted. It puts an extra um, slash in the link. I wonder if he knows. All right, I can't find it right now. I will tweet it out later. <laughs> I don't want to spend too much time diving into it. I can't remember the name of it, what it is called. Um, one more quick Google. J. Ling Storf Chef. Meh. I got the recipe. Cut my hours. Chef. Whatever. I give up. I quit. Anyway, really great article. Long story short, prepare up front and it'll make your life easier now and you won't be dealing with what I'm dealing with, which is all I have is links to demos. But for now, we're just going to go with it. So Thank here, you. yeah, yeah, exactly. So that it would be demo um, and then I'll just drop the URL in there so that there's something outside of it. And then there we go. So we've got that. We've got that. And now comes the meat and potatoes. We are we are missing LIs just to. Ooh, we are missing LIs and we're missing keys. Yeah. Yeah, good call. We are missing LIs. This is why I love Bear Burger. Anyway. Okay. And the div has to be closed. It certainly does. It certainly does. <laughs> All right, there we go. And now we get to the meat and potatoes, which is the description. So I know that this is going to be workout.json. However, I do want to go back to graphical to try and familiarize myself a bit more with what this is going to look like. So if we come up here, it's going to have, okay, so we'll have a data property and then a content, which is the array of, and it looks like I'll need a function that could possibly be recursive in that. No, it would be data con. Yeah. Cause like it could be nested. Correct? Am I correct in thinking that like it is nested? Yeah, it is nested. It yeah. starts with the um, document type on the top yeah. somewhere, and then it goes down. Yeah. So we have description. So what what we could do now is we could either invent everything again, and we could write this function no. to iterate over this JSON object. Please no. Please <laughs> Or goodness. we we quickly Google. Uh, <laughs> Recursion is hard too, right? Recursion oh my is not the easiest thing in the world. No, it's such a pain. So we could just uh, contentful rich text render or react, or we grab a package for that. Oh, I love it. I love it. Contentful rich text renderer. Yeah, and with react, react render packages for H. Yeah. Amazing. I guess I could have just, I just wanted to bring this. And then let me drop this in the chat for everyone following along on stream. So that is super useful. Okay, so let's do it. I'm just going to copy this. I love that you have this. This is so awesome. All right. So we're we're going to install that. All right, so let me yeah. bring up a new terminal. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so installing. And then I, I imagine we're going to need to import this. Yep. Um, and, and then we, we would have to, we may have to install another package, but we see that in, in, in a moment. Okay. Maybe. Is this like a default um, import? Maybe I should take a look at the docs real quick. Just real quick. Okay. Document. When in doubt, read the docs. Right? Exactly. <laughs> so we do document to React components. Got it. Okay. And then, um, oh, and then we just call it and it's just going to spit out. Oh, and we can use that as inner HTML. So that's essentially going to convert it to html for us and the, oh we don't have no, to use that no, we this, just, yeah sorry go ahead this gives react component exactly in html so this gives react components amazing okay and then i do see rich text types um as well might be another package is that what you were referencing we might need 
Yeah, so when we just use it as is, it will use the default rendering um, that we come with the package. But you see that the, the function that it renders the React component, you can override all these certain types ah. inside of the JSON tree. So when you have a bold one, maybe you want to render specific, or maybe when there's something in line yes. pointing somewhere else, you maybe want to do something completely fancy so yep. you can override how the renderer while yes. traversing over the structure behaves. I love this. So there's a very similar thing. So I, what this also reminds me a bit of is kind of like um, MDX, which is like a pretty common thing. It will like create from Markdown React components for you, but you can override which kind for whichever one. And then also yep. uh, I've had to do a lot of work within React Native and there is a uh, like HTML to React Native um, uh, like type converter, and it's the same thing. You can override them if you want to use your own custom components. Otherwise, you're kind of using the defaults. I think we could stick with the defaults for sure for this example. So, document to React components is the function. This is so cool. I can't believe how easy this is. I was really getting scared. I was like, oh, everyone's going to have to watch me struggle with uh, uh, recursion. <laughs> Calling a recursive function. No, no. Yeah, this is not going to be pretty. Yeah. And then where was this? Oh, equals. Well, that's going to be a problem. Contentful. There we go. So we've got that. So now I was like so ready to write this out. But now in here, we can just drop this um, document to React components on workout dot description and I think I think that's I gonna the do JSON it. of this but uh, oh right dot happens. JSON dot JSON I think you're right because when I look at the, what I saw in the docs mentioned that whoa hi sorry let me use oh goodness we got some spam in the chat well goodbye Nero Okay. All right. So let's see what we got going on here. Um, so we go back to our app. Oh my goodness. Did it work? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, actually you can pull it up. So we're using VS code live share. Let me go to live share real quick and make sure that, uh, share server, um, HTTP local from VS host. code. You are kidding me. 300 optional display name. There you go. Bring up local host port 3000. No way. Yep. <laughs> and it's a, it's a tunnel. <laughs> it's a tunnel <laughs> into VS my front end. People are killing it. Oh my God. Killing it. Yep. And so now, uh, so now, uh, Stefan is actually running exactly what I have. Uh, he sees uh, on his local host 3000 what is on my local host 3000 because it's creating a tunnel from my computer to his and mapping his 3000 port to my 3000 port. Hawaii. That is my learning of the day, man. Isn't that awesome? I don't know if you know this, but I could also give you right access to my terminal. You could run terminal commands <laughs> if I wanted to give you access to the terminal. Yeah, VS Code Live Share is very powerful i actually have an idea something i've been working on i've been seeing like a lot of like cohorts and adventure clubs and things like pop up which is like where people it's basically like book clubs or something like that but like around say like learning rust or graphql or you know anything react i actually want to try like doing one of those with a mob programming session where like we pick a project we want to build somebody just loads up vs code and starts a sharing session and you have like three or four people, maybe five or six people, and you all just kind of mob program on a project together while you experiment and learn something. I, I wonder if it would be pure chaos or if it would actually be like fun and interesting because you could Worth share the local environment, right? Like everything would be connected. I think it's worth a, a, a test run at the least. Um, but Let yeah. You know when you kick that off. I'm probably I will. Okay, awesome. Absolutely. I definitely will. So here we go. So here we are. We're at an hour and 15 minutes with a lot of talking. And honestly, a good 15 minutes of that was spent just on me uh, recreating my Contemplo account. But we are up and running. We have a, a functioning React application. We have data models in Contentful. We have 
uh, both of them connected, right? So yes, of course, this doesn't look very pretty, but I am already seeing how powerful this is and cannot wait to migrate my current implementation of Google Docs um, over to, <laughs> yeah, exactly, over to Contentful. Um, so I'm very excited about what this means. So I think, um, yeah, I, I, I guess really like we've gone through the connection. My next thing would be, is there anything you want to show off? Anything you want to talk about? Anything you want to tell everyone who's on stream about Contentful that maybe we didn't get a chance to go over? Is there anything else uh, we think, should cover? I think for, for, for now, for this, uh, for this, is, uh, this, is, this is a good ending, I think. I think that works. So you already had the documentation over. So um, if you would now would like to adjust how the React components are rendered, you would have to pass an options. Uh, Let's field do to that. the document to react. Yeah, that shouldn't take long actually to just Not override at all. the the, yeah, the italic one to finish that up completely. Ooh, I like that. Let's do that. So I'm gonna go back to the docs and take a look at what this would look like. Um yep. so we have a bold, so I'll I'll make a component for um italic so let's just do this so you would have to include this. a new package first so when you go to the top um you see that there are uh, is a uh, blocks marks that defines um these kind of uh render types so that we don't yeah. deal with hard strings or something got it okay so i'm going to grab this contentful rich text types that seems to be the package right okay so Correct. let's go and in install this All right. And so I imagine because we have a type for, um, so we have blocks, we have marks. Yeah. So the italic one is probably a marks. And when we have that, we can just see what is available. Okay. All right. So yeah, let me do that. Um, oh, I see marks dot bold marks dot italic. Ah, so you have a render mark and a render node. Those are objects below that takes the key and then you pass it a function. So simple. Yeah, so you do, so you define a function for everything that is inside of this tree. I got it, I got it. And then just down to text, which is like render text. That's amazing. Okay, this is so cool. So we know we're gonna need our marks. Marks from, and then that was gonna be contemptful rich text types. Cool. So now we've got that, yep. and then uh, I'll do. I can do this here. I can make these options here. Um, well, I'll just leave it called options. It's totally fine. And then I imagine there's marks italic. Yep, there sure is. Um, and then here. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just do a span, but I'll give it a class. Um, yep. So this is gonna be yeah class name equal, and I'll just say uh, oops. I'll say italic, and then I'll go give some styling to make that funky fresh. Okay, so we've got this, um, but now let's real quick before we do that and save, let's open up this index.css, and then here we can say dot italic, um, and so then we can say, well, number one, let's do color, and we'll do like hot pink. Very important. Uh, very important. And then we'll say, what is it? Um, text decoration italic font style. What is the actual property for? Uh, well, Tag this, style? I don't know. Is it style? Style? Is that a thing? No. No, text, text dash something. List, yeah, know. yeah. Text, text emphasis italic, I think. Right? Yeah, we'll try is it. Is that a thing? We're going to try it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not very good with CSS. I just tweeted about this today. Like I'm not, I have no idea. All right, so then we come here and we'll pass in options, which we could name better. Let's just go see what we get. Yeah, let's see. And we jump back to our React app. Okay, so I did not do this right, but you could see our italic styling went away. So we do have class italic, but I think I just did not do, oh, color. I guess. Is it one word, I think? Probably. It is probably. And then text emphasis. Uh, font style. Font style. Font style. style. Thank you. Someone in the that. chat helping uh. us out. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you, Dingleweenie. <laughs> Here's something I never thought I'd say on stream. All right. Here we go. 
Um, okay, so yeah, let's go back into our CSS. As you can tell, I'm not very good with it. Font style. All right, awesome. Heck yeah. So now we jump back. Well, we got that. Hot pink is not a color. But you know what is a color? Salmon. <laughs> Salmon's a color. <laughs> Why aren't you giving me my colors? I really cannot CSS. Oh, I'm making it a string. Uh. I'm so used to doing CSS and JS. So now I want to try hot pink again. Oh, there, see, there is hot pink. Oh, does not CSS much, as you can tell. There we go. Yes, look at that. I love this. Nice. I absolutely love this. This is awesome. Ugh, cool. I mean, cool. so we, that sounds like, like a good wrap up. Huh? Yeah, yeah. This Hot is a great and font style italic. Yeah, exactly. This is a great wrap up point. <laughs> so I just want to clarify again. Um, you know, there's a lot of banter back and forth here, and in just an hour and a half's worth of time, uh, we were able to spin up a headless CMS, add a content type expose that GraphQL API, create the entire front end project, get our, our GraphQL client set up, pull in data from Contentful and then customize it. This is super powerful. Uh, I, you know, I can't express how, how easy this was to like go through. It was of course, obviously awesome having you right here, but I mean, just from the documentation itself, uh, I could have, you know, gone through it myself and, and got, you know, got from uh, A to Z, no problem. So super impressed with this. Y'all are doing an amazing job at Contentful. Love to see it. Love to see the community edition with the GraphQL uh, API exposed. I think that's fantastic. Um, and yeah, I mean, is there anything else you'd want to add uh, or wrap up with? If y'all got any type of like content or events or anything coming up, feel free to go ahead and uh, shout those out. Um, yeah. Well, so for, for us right now, the, the, when you go to contentful.com slash developers, um, so currently, so for the community edition, what I did is that I uh, did basically also a React implementation of our GraphQL API. Oh, okay. So when you go there, you scroll down a little bit and you see uh, there's a blue window, which is like uh, learn GraphQL yeah. or something. Here we go. Yeah. And basically it's uh, 14 episodes um, oh, um, nice. just going over everything with create React app. Uh, and that's something. And we're also starting entering the streaming business game. Yeah. So we're going to start streaming. Or we already started uh, something um, today, actually. So it's my second stream today. Yes, look um, at you on fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the URL to that is, let me just quickly um, yep. find that one. Let's see. Because that's on, on uh, YouTube, Slack right? For that. You're, you're streaming on that YouTube. is on YouTube so yeah. you will find that yeah probably you can just go to contentful YouTube and then uh, if you want to follow along just hit and subscribe there so the next one is next week um, so we're also very flexible what we're going to do we have some guests from Hazira people are there uh, uh, I would have to have a look at the, at the schedule so if you want to join there um, you can check out YouTube or newsletter or Twitters as always oh, snap. Um, so yeah Always that's, on the uh, that's what we can plug here from the contentful side. Awesome. Very cool. I love it. I love it. I love it. And from uh, from my side, this is going to be the, the last stream for this week. Uh, GraphQL Summit was last week. Took it all out of me. I'm done with content for, for the rest of this week. But next week, we'll be back Monday with Orbit, where we talk about what's new in GraphQL. Uh, Tuesday, I'm going to be having Brian Douglas on from GitHub, and we're going to take a look at using GitHub Actions to push your uh, GraphQL schema into nice. Apollo Studio. Yeah, it should be really fun. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and then we'll have Launchpad again on Thursday where we uh, work on building an app from start to finish. And so, yeah, uh, definitely tune in for those. And actually, I'm going to drop a link uh, here in the chat. And you, this is our to our events calendar. So you can just subscribe right to the events calendar and get notified whenever uh, we're going to do just about anything. Um, 
that was awesome. Thank you again for joining me. It was such a pleasure having you on. Uh, thank you for your guidance and walking me through. And one last time, thank you to Contentful for sponsoring GraphQL Summit. That really meant a lot <laughs> to us. I can't tell you enough how much we appreciate it. Uh, we definitely loved having y'all, and it was great to see uh, everyone also uh, uh, hanging out there with y'all in uh, Discord as well. Yeah, so with that, I guess we can we can wrap this up. Um, and yeah, uh, I guess we will see you all when we see you. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Bye.